Good afternoon. I'd like to take you on a journey of discovery. My name is Frank Klaassen. I work as a senior DevOps engineer for Enrise. I've been using Zebex since 2008. I either introduced or improved Zebex in all the, for all the employers uh, I worked for. I've actually learned Zebex when I joined a study group at my university. They were using Zebex and I started working with it and I liked it. I liked it as much that I installed it at home and then eventually introduced it at all my employers as well. I'm a long time open source user and contributor. I just really like how a community can shape a product. And this is actually the first time I'm speaking at a conference. So it is both uh, uh, a bit scary, uh, but it's also really exciting. I'm working for Enrise. Enrise develops high quality software for the internet. You can think of web applications, shops, search solutions. It is founded back in 2000 by four students. Over the years, it has grown to a company of over 50 people. The most interesting part of our company is that we are a self-steering company. We work and collaborate without managers. I'm part of Team Infinity. Our team is responsible for managing the internal IT, software, connectivity, licensing, supporting our development teams. We're also managing a lot of various environments across AWS and Google Cloud for internal usage for our teams, but also for a lot of customers. Our team is also responsible for developing internal applications, portals, and dashboards in order to make the life of the team a little easier. Finally, we are doing DevOps consultancy where we set up CI pipelines, uh, provisioning systems, and monitoring tools for which we use Zabbix. We use it to monitor a lot of different things. We monitor our servers and connectivity, but we're also mon managing, uh, monitoring our AWS services for which we are using the CloudWatch API to pull in the data so we have a centralized monitoring and alerting system instead of having to use two. We're also uh, monitoring specific application components about which I will be talking a little later. Our Zabbix installation is also running on our AWS cloud. Last year, we switched our database to use partitioning because we were running into an issue that the housekeeper could not keep up with the amount of items and data we had in our database. We have almost 350 hosts, which all generate roughly 20,000 items and 5,500 triggers. In terms of size, I think it's a really decent setup. The problem is, with a setup that is growing, you sooner or later run into an issue that you will be creating too many items. An example. A few years ago, one of the development teams came to me and said, Frank, we have a project. The project is using separate domains for all customers. They have a white label domain. Each domain has three subdomains. Can you help us in monitoring the SSL certificates? Please note, they were not using wildcard certificates. They were using domain only. So some quick math led me to a calculation that I needed to create 15 items to monitor all these environments. So, how can you do that? You can do it quick and dirty. You can create a template with the 15 items you need monitoring. At least use some macros to be able to reuse it in the future, so it's not specific to the host for which you have created it for. And all was fine. SSL certificates were being monitored, the team got notifications when it was about to expire, and they could ensure that it would be renewed on time. However, this was until the team came to me and said, yeah, one of the customers canceled, uh, can you please disable the monitoring for this environment? Sure, because I use macros, it's pretty easy. I can just empty out those values and the monitoring stops. Yeah, but <laughs> there are actually two new, three new customers we also want monitored. So instead of having 15 items, it would mean that I would have 18. Yeah, this doesn't work, this doesn't scale well. So it is time for a better solution. Luckily, there is a better solution. It's called low-level discovery. Low-level discovery is built-in functionality in Zabbix since 
It automatically creates items, triggers, and graphs based on JSON input it receives from either the Zabbix agent or the Zabbix server. With each release of Zabbix, it is getting more and more advanced. And hopefully one day it will also include discovering web scenarios for which I created the ticket some time ago. Within our environment, we use low-level discovery a lot. We monitor our FPM pools, OpenVPN clients, SSL certificates, and application components. But actually, what you see here on the list is not limited. You can use it for anything you like, as long as you can create JSON for it. So, let's get back to the SSL issue I mentioned earlier. Creating an it 15 items or 18 items, that doesn't scale well. So how can we use low-level discovery to enhance that? First step was creating a script that would read the web server configuration, both for Apache or Nginx, and it would return a list of all the vHosts that are on the particular server. Within Zabbix, you can create a discovery rule. You give it a name, you tell it what type it is. In this case, we want the agent to send its list of vHosts. We enter what type of key we want, and that we want to update it once an hour. The next part is actually an interesting part, the keep lost resources period. This is a value which indicates how long Zabbix should retain the resources when they are no longer being discovered. This can be anywhere between one hour or 25 years, but you can also set it to zero. Be careful with this, because if your JSON output does not contain the item, and you have it set to zero, it will mean that the items and triggers for it will automatically be removed by Zabbix. This can happen because you have a bug in your script or because your filters are too strict and are filtering out the desired items. So please be careful when using this. Next step is the pre-processing step. This step allows you to mutate the data your script produces. You can apply regular expressions, you can convert XML to JSON, CSV to JSON, and since Zabbix 4.2, you can even use JavaScript to do very advanced uh, pre-processing to format the data into something Zabbix can work with. Next step would be creating low-level discovery macros. These macros are being used to refer to from items and triggers. In my case, I do not need to specify this because my JSON output already contains these macros. If your JSON is more complicated, because, for instance, you didn't create it yourself, uh, but you have a vendor that's producing a, C a JSON uh, feed, you can use this to point it towards a particular part in your JSON file. Finally, there's an option to filter out the input of the low-level discovery. In my case, I only want the VOs that are listening on port 443 because I'm doing SSL monitoring and I don't care about port 80. You can use this to match specific things, but you can also tell it to not match specific things. After you've created the low-level discovery rule, you go move on to the next step, which is creating the items and triggers. Unlike normal templates, you're not creating specific items or triggers, but you're creating a prototype. This prototype is more or less a blueprint of how your item and triggers should be based on the low-level discovery input. You can use the LOD macros in your script output. For instance, I'm calling my certificate check and I'm uh, providing it with the hostname and the port it needs to check. So, what happens? The discovery gets executed. Zabbix creates the items that are created as a prototype. And a set of triggers is being created as well. In this particular setup, we are using a set of cascading triggers to increase the severity level for each time, each, the, each day you get closer to the actual expiry date of a certificate. We're also using low-level discovery for monitoring our OpenVPN clients. Why are you monitoring your OpenVPN clients? Well, I'll get to that in a bit. Our users can log into our VPN portal and download their configuration. When they do, a file gets created on our VPN server. We have a user parameter script which parses that list and returns it as a Zabbix discovery. 
Based on that, Zebex will create the desired items. In this case, we are tracking the incoming and outgoing bandwidth and the client's IP of, you, of the VPN client. We're doing this for two reasons. One is that we are tracking the bandwidth per user, and the other is to prevent that they are accidentally using the VPN client at the office. First is uh, because sometimes people forget to uncheck the box, route everything over VPN, which means that they're also routing their Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, whatever they're using, and they only need to use our VPN for specific hosts and specific networks. So they don't need it. Accidental users at the office, well, they don't need to use the VPN client at the office either because we have a permanent VPN tunnel. This is all linked to Zabex alerting and it will automatically send out Slack notifications to the person in question, notifying them that they're either using too much traffic or that they accidentally have the VPN client running on their, while they're at the office. We're also using low-level discovery to monitor specific application components. Generally, you would monitor whether a server is running or whether a service is running. But in our case, we wanted to monitor the specific application components, such as external APIs and database connectivity. You can monitor whether your database server is running, but can you actually check if your application is able to use that database? For instance, there is a mistake in the configuration, or there is a bug or a missing dependency, preventing it from being able to use the database. By using our application component monitoring, we can specifically check for these items. With APIs, we can, for instance, check uh, whether the IDEO API works for payment processing. The development team is the one who created the application, so they generally know best how, how it works and how they can check if it works. But they do not, generally do not have any or much knowledge about Zabbix. They also want to be able to be flexible in uh, defining their monitoring wishes. They don't want to wait on ops to, uh, do, uh, to implement new changes. They want to be able to do it themselves. The ops team, on the other hand, <laughs> they know a lot about Zabbix, but they don't know a lot about the application. With application component monitoring, they don't need to. We are giving the teams do a way to simply define what application components they have and what the status is of this. For this, within their application, they create two endpoints, a key endpoint and a status endpoint. The key endpoint is a list of all the specific application components they want monitored. For instance, a database connection, a feed, an API. They can define at what level of severity they want it monitored, and then there is the status endpoint, which contains the same components, but also a status. This status is being pulled by Zabbix. What will happen is our uh, low-level discovery is being executed, and it will automatically create all the required items within Zabbix with the specific uh, severity level they indicated. It also creates all the triggers that are linked to it, and if they want to make a change, if they want to remove an API, or if they want to add a new one, uh, they can simply do it inside of their code. Zabbix will automatically pick on the change, and it starts monitoring. Development team happy, ops team happy. And hopefully you are happy too, because this is an open source solution. It is available on GitHub, for which uh, I've put a link underneath. Uh, but the presentation will also be available on the website, so you don't have to type it over. Uh, that's it, thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, are the applications of your developers triggering the low-level discoveries? Or is there a process to check the applications of your developers? Um, well, we, in our low-level discovery, we have the, 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 the two feeds. I can go back to the page. Mm -hmm. Our Zabbix checks the first one to retrieve the actual components, so it creates the items, mm -hmm. and we have a script running on the Zabbix server that is pulling this particular, the, pulling the status endpoint. Okay. So it's basically something like a cron job that cron easily checks Zabbix? Yes, more, more or less, yeah. But in this case, the cron job is Zabbix yeah. with the defined uh, uh, refresh rate. Okay. Cool. Okay, nice.
Hi, is this working? Yeah. Hey, I got a question. I did actually do, uh, something very similar. Mm -hmm. And uh, with application monitoring of uh, specifically uh, Java applications. And I came across a bit of a challenge when I had to pass uh, the, the URL of the uh, specific thing I had to query. Um, but that turned out to contain spaces and commas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I had to URL encode it for, uh, because uh, yeah, your, your Zopix key, uh, the comma is the separator between fields. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you, and by any chance come across the same challenge and if so how you solved it um no our status endpoints are pretty standard so we don't have any weird urls or uh it's uh so sorry like <laughs> like a you yeah i guess i'm i'm just looking to this uh to the slide here mm -hmm. and and my understanding is that uh, the left hand side is a low-level discovery of, so to say, services, for example. Mm -hmm. And the right-hand side would be an example of um, the current status code of some certain service, right? Yes, that's correct. That, that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what I'm asking myself right now, and since you're here, I can ask you. Mm -hmm. yeah? That's what you're good for. Yeah. So, Let's say I've got a service A, uh, which is, uh, I will translate warning component into service A, if this is, mm -hmm. if this is, if this is yeah, okay. That's yeah? right, yeah. So I've got a service A, and that service A will give me a result of, let's say, uh, 0, 1, and 2 mm -hmm. for, for different uh, severities. Yes. And let's say I've got a service B, so different service, mm -hmm. and that is not using... 102 for those severities, but it's using different return values. Yes. How would you, is, is this something that you would cover here? Is it something that gets covered? Because I'm looking for how would you now set up the trigger in the low level discovery thing? Mm -hmm. uh, well, how our application component system works is that it uses uh, a zero, one, or two uh, result status and it maps that to a particular. Uh, mapping within Zavix that changes the uh, zero to an okay and a one to an error. If your specific component returns a different value, uh, this is something the application has to do uh, while generating the key or the status endpoint so that they, they translate that particular uh, result code into one that is being supported by our uh, application support, uh, application component monitoring functionality. Okay, so, so what I have to make sure is then I have to normalize the status codes in, yes. a, in a way that they're consistent across all of the services that, I'm, that yes. I'm going to address. Yes, that's correct. I understand. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Uh, uh, how was your uh, JSON generated? You got a centralized database mm -hmm. or uh, some custom script on every host? Um, well, within the application, the developers implement their endpoint and they, they check it. Uh, and, and Zabbix retrieves the JSON, if I'm correctly interpreting your question. But, um, when you deploy the Zabbix agent, um, the middleware that you use on every server, um, every developer, include their um, monitoring stuff, mm -hmm. like the and the script, everywhere? Yes. Okay. There, there is a status endpoint like slash status slash keys, and we query that, and they can append, extend that, or uh, remove items that are no longer there. But this, this does not use any agent. This is, this is purely done from the Zabbix yeah. server. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you.